This is a very quick and short uh, introduction to control charts for attributes. I will post some examples of making these control charts uh, with the document camera approach uh, under a separate video, but I wanted to just give you a quick introduction. These are uh, the two types of control charts, statistical process control charts for attributes uh, and how you choose which one to, which one to use. So attributes are different from variables because they are categorical. They are binary, good, bad, yes, no, pass, fail, acceptable, unacceptable. And you're, you're typically counting defectives, you could be counting successful ones, but you're typically, this one passes, one. This one fails, uh, sorry, this one fails, one. This one passes, don't count it. This one, this one, fail, two. And so uh, you, it's a, it's a pass or a fail. Remember, variables are the other one, and variables are a continuous measure. And in, in that case, you use the, the X bar or the average chart with the range chart. So uh, there are two types of charts for attributes. The first one is called a P chart, and it's a proportion or a percentage chart. In this circumstance, you do uh, uh, you you look at the proportion you you come up with uh, a, a control chart con central tendency and upper and lower limits for uh, the proportion or the percentage that is defective uh, and in that circumstance, you are sampling a specific number. You're you're saying, okay, we're going to look at a hundred units. And we're going to look at what percentage of those are, are defective. So if you have an N, if you know how many you're sampling, then you use the P chart. If you don't, if you're just doing a count, but you don't know how many, for example, uh, we're looking at the number of complaints we get to our customer service line in a day. Well, in that circumstance, we don't have an N. We don't have a we're not pulling a certain number of files and seeing which ones complaint. In that case, we have a count, and that's just a C chart. Our preference is probably to do the P chart when we can, uh, but if we don't have an N in that circumstance, we use a C chart. So if we're told to do a statistical process control chart or we have the need for a statistical process control ch chart in our jobs in that circumstance, we will then uh, first decide if we have a variable or an attribute. Variable is continuous, attribute is categorical, plat, pat, binary, pass, fail, yes, no. If we decide it's an attribute, which we're looking at here, uh, if we know how many we drew, if we know N, we would use a P chart and otherwise we would use a, a C chart. So control limits for P charts. Uh, most of us don't need to know that population will be a binomial distribution, by a, but applying the central limit theory allows us to assume a normal distribution for the sample statistics. You don't need to know that. What you need to know is you take uh, a proportion, an average, just like we did for the X chart, you have uh, an average or a mean fraction defective in the sample. So that's that center point. And so we're, when we're sampling, we sample 100 each time. And if we do that 10 times, n is equal to 100. It's the sample size, not the number of times we take a sample. Then we look at the average proportion defective, uh, and that becomes p bar. We have z, which is the number of standard deviations we're willing to accept. You're usually given that when you have to calculate these. Uh, Standard deviation of the proportion is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, and n is the sample size. So again, the, the places that students go wrong here are uh, determining n, and when I, I encourage you to look at my video on uh, some examples, determining n and determining attributes. Once you've got that, this is relatively easy. Calculate the average plus Z, which you're usually given, times the standard deviation of P to get the upper control limit, 
and p bar minus z times the standard deviation of p bar hat uh, for the lower control limit. And that standard deviation is the square root of p bar times one minus p bar. Both of those will be, because they are proportions, you don't put them in as whole number percentages. It's always a number between zero and one. So this is a number between zero and one, and this is one minus that number divided by n, and then you take the square root. So the, the formula is relatively straightforward. The only place you can go wrong is on n, or if you decide to try and use a, a p chart for a variable. Then a c chart is, again, is a population with a Poisson distribution, but applying the central limit theorem allows us to assume a normal, again, nice to know, but not critical to know if you are just a, either a student in operations management studying statistical process control, or in fact, a, uh, uh, a practitioner who's, who's trying to dis de develop these statistical process control charts. You don't need to know that. Again, you need to do these upper and lower control limits. Here you have, just because you don't have N, so you don't have a standard deviation, you don't have anything, you have C bar, which is the average number of defects. So as I said, let's say it was calls into your call center or complaints into your call center. There are five yesterday, uh, there are six the day before, and there was a seven the day before that. You'd probably do a bigger. Then your average then would be six. C bar would be six. Your upper control limit would be six plus three times the square root of six. And your lower control limit would be C bar minus three times the square root of six. And, uh, and then you would have control limits. And then you would look and say, let's look at the number of calls we have in the next day and in the next day to see if anything's changing. And again, you would expect there to be some variation in that uh, in those numbers on a day-to-day -day basis, but you would expect if nothing else has changed that they'd be within those control limits. If there is all of a sudden a difference, you're outside of those control limits, then you have an assignable cause, you have to investigate it. Uh, you might have launched a new product and there are, new, there are more problems with that. That would give you, you might have a new staff member and there are more problems with that, but you would have an assignable cause that you would have to look at. So with attributes, attributes are binary, categorical, yes, no, pass, fail. Uh, if you know the number of times you're drawing a sample to get a proportion, you would use a P chart and otherwise you would use a C chart. That very short and in a nutshell is what you uh, need to know for, uh, for uh, st statistical process control charts for attributes. Thanks, have a great day.